grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue our series of Jesus Followers, Discipleship 101. Uh, today we focus especially uh, on the reality that, that following Jesus is always, not just first and foremost, but always uh, a, a matter of the heart. And when it's not a matter of the heart, um, we're really not following Jesus, uh, dear, dear Christian friends. This last week, I, I kind of rolled that around in my head. How do you define that thing called heart? You know, you, you know what I mean? It, it's it's beyond the flesh and blood reality, isn't it? Uh, it it's maybe um, the very foundation. Maybe we could use the word seat. The very seat of who we are. That's that's what our heart is, right? It, the very depths of our soul. It it doesn't have to do with biology, do, does it? It's it's part of the human condition. The the, the mystery. That, that we live in, that, that we know there's, there's something more than, than what we do and, and what we feel and, and why we do what we do. Have you ever lost heart in something? I mean, it, I mean, it's really weird, right? You're still healthy. You still have a mind. You still have the ability to do things, right? But if it's not here, It's not here. It's like your legs are, are cut out from underneath you. I think that's I think that's why it's both awesome and scary when you talk about raising kids, isn't it? Because they're not little machines. You can't just open up their chest and give them the right heart, huh? With a heart, you can you can only offer things. Those things, those gifts, have to be received, right? I, I know when children are small, you can force them to do things, right? But if they don't have a heart, when they grow older, they'll have nothing to to guide them. That's why I firmly believe that young people, when they choose to be guided by the gifts of the heart that Jesus would give them, they should be honored and and respected. Because they can always choose to turn their backs on those gifts. And, And we can too, huh? And live in what ends up to be total darkness. In this text, Jesus is giving gifts of the heart. I, I, I want you to take that away from you. This, so many times, people talk about this text as if Jesus is saying, "Do this, and good things will happen." And that couldn't be farther from the truth here. Jesus is giving gifts of grace. This word "blessed" it, 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 in, in the Hebrew it's pronounced Baruch. Can you guys say that Baruch? One, two, three. Baruch, yes, a wonderful, rolls off the tongue. I love the way, the way it's pronounced, Baruch. And it always had the connotation of one kneeling before the king and receiving blessings. Blessings the king didn't have to give. Blessings that were of grace, his undeserved kindness on a subject. And blessings that were given so that this subject could go out and accomplish the things the king wanted him to accomplish. Think about the way the text sets up this little episode. Jesus is on a hillside. He's the king. The disciples are gathered at his feet. Jesus is blessing them. He's baruching them. He gives them gifts of grace. And these gifts that he's talking about are gifts offered to our hearts. They can always be refused. You can never force anything on a heart. That that thing we are in the very depths of our soul. And yet Jesus comes and as He speaks these blessings, as He baruchs our hearts, 
His Spirit comes with those words and would touch our hearts with these gifts and would urge us to receive them and live in them. Now, this, i got to tell you, that whenever you have to preach something like this, when you have a list of things, it's always something you get scared of because it's like, a, B, C, okay, how, how far do we have to go yet? You know, and, and we kind of lose track. Can I just say there, say this real quick? I'm going to go through these blessings. There. Every one of them are awesome. But I just pray that God's Spirit touches you with one today. And the awesomeness of what He would bring to your heart in that one. If it's more great, fantastic. But each of these are a wonderful gift that God would give our hearts. That Jesus the king of all would give our hearts. Okay. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit. In, in the uh, devotions I wrote this week, I, I, I talked about a, a singing group uh, called the Carpenters. Anybody remember the Carpenters? Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. And they, they did a song, and, and it, I remember the line, it said, I won't last the day without you. Boy, they did a lot better than I do it. But I, I won't last a day without you. How, how many remember that? Anybody? Uh, to be poor in spirit is to know that we can't last a day without Jesus. That life without God is really death. The Bible says life called biology, life, bios, and there's a life called life with God, Zoe. That's the eternal life we have right now. But it's one thing to know it here. It's one thing to receive the gift of God's Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. Say, yeah, that's right. I won't last a moment without Him. Jesus also said, blessed are those who mourn. And I, it, it seems that as I group these, it makes sense. But there's lots of ways to group these. You can look at them individually. But it just seems that this makes sense. Blessed are those who mourn. As I thought about this beatitude, I, I thought about two things. I thought about Peter, who denied Jesus three times. Remember that? Remember what he did? He, he went out and he wept bitterly. Could Jesus do, do, I'm sorry, could Peter do that without God's Spirit touching his heart? Blessed are those who know their own sin, who know when they turn their back on Jesus, to know when they turn their back on those they ought to be loving in his name, and in tears, tears deep in their soul perhaps. Know it and come flying back to Jesus. The other thing I thought about with this weeping, I, I thought about Jesus when he wept. Do you remember when he wept? It, it was at Lazarus' uh, 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 funeral. Remember that? His sisters were distraught. He was their only brother. They were weeping, and, and there was all this crying, and, and it says Jesus wept. He was. His heart was so full of compassion for those whose lives were being ruined by sin, whose world was destroyed, who, who had to put up with all this hurt and pain and death and crying and mourning and weeping in their lives because of sin. Blessed are you when God's Spirit would give you that kind of heart. When you see others who are suffering because of sin. Maybe it's just the consequences of having sin in our world as people get sick and they hurt and they go into shadows and they die. Maybe, maybe it's the consequences of poor choices. Blessed are you when, when you weep over what sin does to our world 
into our lives. But just as Jesus was comforted, just as he rose from the dead victoriously, just as he raised Lazarus from the dead, you will be comforted in that you can bring the victory of Jesus into the lives of others. These are gifts that God would give our spirit, our heart. We're not focused on doing. We're focused on being. Okay, Lord. I group these two together also. Blessed are the meek, and blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. God's not here. Jesus is not here saying, I want everybody to know they ought to be timid and weak. He's not saying here, you know, the church is only for women. In fact, there's a Bible verse in Timothy, and it says, I have not called you to a spirit of timidity and weakness, but a spirit of power and strength. So what does this mean? What does it mean to be meek? It means to humble yourself under the authority of another. Jesus did the will of the Father. He was meek towards his Father. When you take a job and you have a boss, you humble yourself under his wishes or her wishes, right? To have a heart that's meek towards God is to humble ourselves under his will. His guidance and His will. And when we do that, God's Spirit would change our hearts to hunger and thirst after righteousness. To want what God wants. Gifts of the heart to gifts given that can be rejected gifts given that can be received. Oh, oh, the promises are there. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be given to you. Everything you need, huh? Humble yourself under God. Be meek unto Him and you will inherit the earth. God will give you everything you need. So don't worry about it. Just walk with Him. We had some in this congregation last week uh, and if, if uh, the person's here, I, 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 I'm not calling you by name. I'm, I'm not embar- I hope I'm not embarrassing you in any way. But I, I was just uplifted by this individual as they came out of the church. I said, how are things going? And, and they said to me, they said, things are going great. He says, I lost my house last week. But I got my job back. And I've got a place to live. Humble ourselves unto God and trust that He will supply our every need. He will. Boy, that's got to be a gift from God, huh? Because that's not how our hearts work. Okay, Lord. Blessed are the merciful and blessed are the pure in heart. I, I think these kind of go together too. To be merciful is to show kindness, and the key word here is to an offender. When I read this and thought about it, I thought about those times in my children's lives that I caught them red-handed. Have you, did you ever do that? Well, you absolutely caught them red-handed and the blood drained out of their face and they thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to get killed here, right? And those times when I was wise enough to put my arm around them and laugh with them and say, we know that's not good, but we're okay, Right? To have mercy on them when they didn't deserve it. That's not how how our hearts work. God's Spirit would give us that gift that reflects the gifts of Jesus who show us mercy every moment of every day and for eternity. Mercy to us who offend in so many ways because of our sin. In the pure of heart, the authentic stuff. It's the stuff that says, I'm going to show you mercy. You've offended me. I ought not to. But it's from the heart. 
it's real. And it's never going away. Again, it's a reflection of what Jesus does for us. Finally, blessed are the peacemakers. Well, I've thought about a lot about this lately. Um, we all have parts that are unsettled, huh? Parts um, that are always searching and, and never seem to be finding what they need to be filled up in, unless they found Jesus, and then they got to fly back to Jesus every day. Hearts that are angry because they're not filled up, and that anger bursts out. In everything we do to one another. Is that wrong? Can you relate to that? Whether it's in our closest of relationships. Yeah, our husbands and wives and children. Whether it's with our neighbors. Whether it's shutting up our hearts to those who are hurting over there because they just don't deserve it. Whether it's the hate we have for those people over there because they're different. Blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus was called the Prince of Peace. He brings peace to our hearts. We have peace with God by grace through faith. In that peace, He would empower us to bring peace into our world, into our relationships, into the lives of others and to witness to the seed of that peace, Jesus Christ. Now, the, the, I don't know, the last few years, I, I've really noticed how we almost worship violence in our society. Is that too much of a statement? Rambo 1, Rambo 2, Rambo 3. God's Spirit would change our hearts so that we can be different, countercultural, bringing peace into our world and into the lives of others. The last one. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. Now, now, this is a different one. Notice something's happening to you here. Blessed are all the others are who you are, but blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. You see, if God... And Jesus Christ has changed your heart so much that you're actually persecuted for living like Jesus did. The response is to rejoice. It's a reflection of God's Spirit in your heart. It's the imprimatur, the seal that by grace and faith he has brought you into the kingdom. Following Jesus, it's always a matter of the heart. Today, God's Spirit, through these words of blessing of our King, would give these gifts to our hearts. And not just today, but every day. Pray that you might receive them. Live in them by faith. And could I say one more thing? More than the other weeks almost, I, I would invite you to take home the reflections and, and to read through them. Um, this stuff is wonderful stuff, but it's so easy uh, to kind of let go through the fingers of our minds and not grasp for our souls. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts in